Good day and thank you for watching the ACS Library. My name is Kyle and I aim to help you prepare for the private pilot checkride for free in under 5 minutes a day. Today's video is the first of our videos covering meteorology and weather theory. More specifically, we will cover the composition and stability of the atmosphere as it relates to aviation. Diving right in, weather may be defined as the current state of the atmosphere. The atmosphere is constantly trying to achieve equilibrium, and in doing so, it creates constant motions that we know as the weather. In a perfectly dry world, the air around us is a mixture of gases, roughly 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and about 1% of a mixture of other gases such as helium and carbon dioxide. Air is never perfectly dry, however, and therefore, it is a mixture of these gases and typically about 0 to 5% water vapor. As the water vapor content increases, the gases decrease proportionately. Next, we will cover the layers of the atmosphere, using this graphic shown. The numbers along the bottom depict the temperature in degrees Celsius. To the right, we have our altitude in miles above the Earth's surface. The yellow line depicts atmospheric temperature at a given altitude. The layer just above the Earth's surface is known as the troposphere. Extending from the surface to roughly 36,000 feet high, the troposphere is where nearly all weather occurs. Following the yellow temperature trend line, we see that the troposphere is characterized by a decrease in temperature for any increase in altitude. More on this in a moment. The tropopause is a thin layer of atmosphere above the troposphere, and above that lies the stratosphere, which exhibits relatively small increases in temperature with altitude. Commercial aircraft often cruise in the lower stratosphere to avoid turbulence and convection. I'll cover the space shuttle checkride in another video sometime, but for the purposes of a private pilot checkride, we will not discuss the layers of the atmosphere beyond the stratosphere in this video. Next, we must define standard atmosphere. This is simply a datum, or a point of reference, in terms of sea level pressure and temperature, and how these properties change with changes in height. In aviation, we will use this datum quite often, for example, when calibrating the altimeter setting or calculating performance data. At sea level, the standard atmosphere is a temperature of 15 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 29.902 inches of mercury. The lapse rate, or rate at which temperature decreases with any gain in altitude, is 2 degrees Celsius per 1,000 feet. Similarly, pressure decreases at 1 inch of mercury per 1,000 feet. So based on the standard day lapse rates, at 1,000 feet MSL, one may expect to see a temperature of 13 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 28.902 as we decrease our temperature by 2 and pressure by 1 inch. Following the same principle, at 4,000 feet MSL, what temperature and pressure might one expect to find? If you've answered 7 degrees Celsius and 25.902 inches of mercury, you'd be correct. Moving on, we will now discuss the density of the air. Air has weight and is compressible. Air exerts pressure on the Earth's surface as a result of this weight. To gain a better understanding of this weight, picture a 10,000 foot high column of water. Air and water act very similarly in some regards. Now, imagine how little pressure one would feel while floating at the top of this pool. There's not much pressure because there's not much water directly above you. However, as we descend, the water weighs on us, hurting our ears, and if we manage to get deep enough, the weight of the water above us would eventually crush us. The same happens with air, but obviously much less intensely. At 10,000 feet MSL, we have 10,000 feet less air weighing down on us than we would have 10,000 feet lower at sea level. Therefore, the pressure at 10,000 feet MSL is much lower than that at sea level. The final concept of the atmosphere we will discuss is atmospheric stability. Just as with an aircraft, the stability of the atmosphere refers to its ability to resist change when disturbed. A stable atmosphere will resist any upward or downward displacement, otherwise known as convection. An unstable atmosphere allows upward and downward disturbances to develop into a vertical or convective current. In the aircraft, we experience this instability as turbulence. Any time that air is pushed upward, it is allowed to expand because of the decrease in atmospheric pressure, and thus the air cools with no transfer of heat energy. This is known as adiabatic cooling. Adiabatic heating occurs when downward air is compressed by the greater atmospheric pressure and thus heats up. Think of pressure cookers. It is possible to have differing levels of stability at different altitudes, with an incredibly stable air mass sitting just above another incredibly unstable one. Lastly, we will cover the indicators of stable and unstable air, beginning with stable air. Poor visibility may be an indicator of stable air, as nothing is clearing the obstructing phenomena from the area. Other indicators may be stratiform clouds, continuous precipitation, and smooth air. Unstable air may be indicated by the opposite, good visibility, 
cumuliform clouds, scattered showers, and rough or turbulent air. Thunderstorms, 10 times out of 10, are a sign of violently unstable air and should be avoided by a minimum of 20 miles for turbulence and hail. This concludes today's video over atmospheric stability and composition. I hope that it's been helpful. As always, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, I hope that you may like it or share it along to someone else who may benefit. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and make sure the bell to the right of the subscribe button is activated so you'll get notifications about future videos. Feedback in the comments or messages let me know where to look at improving these videos. Thanks again and safe flying.